first one is a fabulous lot and I really think this will fly, so come with me. And we're going to show you three amazing antiques. You've got the full description, look around them, you'll get the auction valuation, and then you'll watch them sell. See if you can value them as well as an auctioneer. Let's take a look at this. Well, I know you're a big lover of Mouseman, David. Wow. It's a great thing. That's an owl. It is an owl. An owl Tell me about mouse. it. Lovely thing. I, you don't see many of these carvings. I found it in a house in Richmond. Right. Richmond, North Yorkshire, that is. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> so that's local to Local, to us. yeah. yeah. Um, and bless him, the, the guy didn't know what he had in all honesty. Why not? Because I thought the whole world knows well, now about Mouseman. I think he knew what he had, but he didn't know what he had in monetary terms. Okay, monetary yeah. terms. Think about that. David, as you probably know, is a master at all Mouseman stuff. I mean, Mouseman, the company just down the road, so you, you, you have a really good clientele for vintage Mouseman. But you probably know what this might be worth even if you think you know what it might be worth, <laughs> you might be in for a shock. Yeah. So tell me about the chap that owns it. What, what did you say to it? Well, he was, he was gifted it in 1975 by the company who he worked for. Um, and, I mean, I, I was about to leave the house. I was doing a routine valuation visit. Not much there. Got up from my chair and just over the top of some greetings cards on the mantelpiece, noticed this peering over the top. Just this um, little head. Just, just the top of the head, and I just got up and peeked over, and I said, "Gosh, you got a mouseman owl there?" And he knew he had a mouseman owl. And he said, "I said, oh gosh, I couldn't sell that." Ah. He said, "Well, how much is it worth?" And I said, it "Probably." Go on. I said, "A couple, probably a couple of thousand. He said, "Take it with you." Ah. <laughs> couple of thousand quid. <laughs> oh my gosh! So he was giving it as what a leaving gift. A or leaving something. gift, yeah. Brilliant. Okay, so mid 1970s owl mouseman carved. Piece, two thousand pounds. What is the exact estimate? We've put an estimate of two to three thousand on it. And what's your gut feeling? I've seen them make four. Wow. What's your yeah. gut feeling? But, uh, it's lovely. It's in nice condition. So, yeah. It's so it's one owner from new. Yeah. Never been on the market before. It needs a new home for Christmas. It does. It is yeah. Christmas time. We've got to find a new home. That's interesting. Can we just have a look at what the owl is holding? Because tell us about the relevance of the, the mouse. The owl is holding the, the mouse. The mouse is the signature of Robert Thompson. Um, the saying goes that he used to say, I'm as poor as a church mouse. Yeah. That's where it came from. Um, but yeah, highly collectible. Obviously, the Thompson workshop is still going today in Kilburn, um, North Yorkshire highly collectible usually you find you know carvings and things like this kind of novelty items you don't see so much you see the tables the stools the bookcases the ashtrays the bookends so kind of just kind of decorative carvings are, are rarer um, I mean I think I've only seen a few owls come to the market in the last five or ten years puts a smile yeah. on my face David so two to three thousand pound is the estimate Lovely. You think it might make a bit more? I think it could do. Okay, very interesting. One owner from New Owl, he's about 45 years old, two to three thousand pounds. Yeah, I think he's gonna, I think he's gonna make three. Fingers crossed. That's, that's my prediction. What's yours? Let us know how close you get to the final hammer price. Good luck you, good luck Owl. Thank you. Whatever your prediction was, add a bit more on. Hold on to your seats. Six, Robert Marshall Thompson, a lovely owl, which I found in the house in Richmond. Uh, gifted to the seller in 1975 by the company he worked for. Um, 1800 bid on the sale room straight away. 1800 bid on the sale room. 1800. 1900 on Easy Life. 2000 on Easy Life. 2002, 2004, 2006, 2008. 3000. 3000 bid on Easy Life. 3002 on Easy Life. 3004 with Jason. 3004, 3006 on Easy Life. 3008 with Jason. 3008 bid. 4000 on Easy Life. 4002 with Jason. 4002, 4004 on Easy Life. 4006 with Jason. 4008 on Easy Life. 4008 bid. Take a look at that smile. 5,000 on the sale room, 5,000 on bid, 
It's on the sale on the five thousand pounds. Five thousand five on Easy Life. Five five on Easy Life. Five thousand six thousand with Jason. Six thousand bid. Six thousand bid with Jason. At six thousand pounds. Try one more if you want an Easy Life. It's a lovely thing. At six thousand pounds. Six thousand bid then. It's on the sale room at six thousand pounds. I'm selling it. Six thousand. All done. Six thousand. Six thousand to buy a one, two, three, nine. Thank you very much for your bids. Six thousand pounds. I bet you got nowhere near that. We didn't. I don't know about you, David, but I'm ready for a cup of tea. Follow me. You know I'm always ready for a cup of tea. Just getting a cup of tea here is quite rare. <laughs> Coming by. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> oh, you'd have a good cup of tea out of that. Well, I've got to say, I recognise the design. I mean, it screams a certain period. Can you recognise the period it's screaming? Well, whether you can or not doesn't make any difference because David Elstop is going to tell you all about it. Go for it. A crack and service. Isn't yeah. It? Yes. Lovely thing. Super decor. It's just absolute height of decor. Um, it's made by the Shelley factory. Okay, so British? British, Staffordshire. Yeah. Previously known as Wildman and Company. Oh, very good. Changed to Shelley in 19, around 1925. Okay, and date wise for these, these are what, 30? About 1931. 1931, so very really precise. Height, height of decor. Yeah. Um, and the pattern name is Horn of Flowers. Horn of Flowers. It's quite a rare pattern. Okay. Um, and the shape, each kind of sh Shelley generally, ha generally have different shape names. This is called Vogue. A, a very, again, Art Deco. That word itself, it Vogue, is. I think was coined during the Art Deco yeah, period. You think of geometric shapes, don't you, as soon as you hear it, really. You really do. Um, and, and talk about things being from the Art Deco period, so yeah, 1920, 30, before the beginning of the Second World War, so 20 to 39, roughly yeah. about. So it's mid period and it's probably the height of the art deco period. Yeah, I'd agree. It's and it's the height of design, isn't it? It is. And I mean as as kind of deco China goes, Shelley are the name that, that people want really. Yeah. Um, you know, tea service is generally something that have not done well at auction recent years, particularly kind of Victorian ones and very I traditional know. looking I ones. Know. But you can still sell a really good deco looking tea service. See, there you go. There are always rules in this business and there are things that break the rules <laughs> in this business. It's quite complicated. So as a rule of thumb, David's right, tea sets, I mean, for goodness sake, a Victorian full tea set, 30 odd pieces, can be worth as little as how much? 20 pounds. 20 yeah. pounds. How many times have people come to you and said, I've got granny's tea service. It's at least 100 yeah. years old. It must be worth a load of money. Can I put it into auction? You are the bearer of bad news oh, yeah. a lot of the time. I bring more bad news than I do good news. <laughs> there you go. He doesn't even <laughs> mind admitting it. But with this thing, with a sh if someone came in with a really good yeah. Shelley tea set, you're going to give them good news. I am. OK, I give am. us some good news. Give I us mean, some. This is just a partial service. We have 17 pieces. The th piece which is worth the most money isn't there, the teapot. Right. So we only have cup, saucers, side plates, sandwich plate, cream jug, sugar bowl. Do you think it would have, it would have had a teapot? Yes. So yeah. the teapot's been broken the or lost in the mists yeah. of time. I mean, value wise, we've put one to 200 on it. Oh, I think that's fantastic. But I think it'll, I think it'll go on. Okay, so it's, it's a, a, a private sale? It is. Okay, so they want to sell it. So one to 200 is, go on, you know the term, it is. It's is a, it, it should be a come and get. It's a come and get me yeah, estimate. You, I mean, that makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Put a low estimate on something, it will gain a lot more interest. If you overkill something with a high estimate, people just drop away. I have trust the market. Okay, yeah. good. Very interesting. One to 200. My yeah. prediction it's going to make much more than 200. What about you? I think it might make five or six. Whoa, wow. You are very <laughs> optimistic. This is good. Okay. I say over 200. He says five to 600 pounds. If you've got something that looks a bit like it's at home, you might be in the money. Yeah. Okay. Fingers is, crossed. All right. Okay. Well, good luck to you. Let us know how close you get to the final hammer price. See you in a moment.
Bye now. Three. One, four, three. Uh, Eric Slater for Shelley's an Art Deco War Corner Flowers Pass and Park Tea Service, circa 1931. Just a part service for a wonderful design, quite a rare pattern. A lot of interest in this. I've got bids, well, bids are in 600 already. I've got 600 bid online. 600 pounds bid. 1100 pounds bid on Easy Live. 1100 bid. 1100 bids on Easy Live to 1100 pounds. 1100 bid, do I see 1200 next? The bids on Easy Live to 1100 then. An Australian bidder at 1100 pounds that I would sell. And 1100 then, fair warning, to 1100 pounds. All done. So down under at 1100 pounds to buy a 5432. Brilliant, £1,100 and it's off down under to Australia. David Elstop had a feeling about this one. I was a million miles out. Well, for our next lot, I've got something which I think is going to appeal to an international market. International, eh? Okay. Oh. What do you think of this? Wow, that's a dagger. Right, very, very different, this, isn't it? <laughs> okay, I mean, that is one heck of a dagger. Yeah. What's the story? Um, it's not one I've catalogued this, actually. Our military expert has looked at this. Right. Um, just a fabulous quality. Have a look and see if you what do you think of it. It's fabulous quality. Well, well, well it's period, isn't it? It's, it's no reproduction. I, I think mean, it's a, we think it's, it's, it's 19th century. Yeah, it's got to be 19th yeah. century. So 1850, 1880, something yeah, like yeah. that. Nationality, it looks very Eastern to me. We, we think it could be Russian. Russian. I think possibly a Russian hunting dagger. Okay. Um, the quality is just superb. We're kind of all engraved with a stag and a hound baying at a tree and then still retaining the original gilding. Yeah. Very nice quality and very little weight. Hasn't been polished. You know? You're big into things well, not being you, polished, David. You would just lose a definition of yes. this. And the artwork and the blade is, is fabulous. And I don't think that's a good top tip for people watching this, just, that an antique needs to look like an antique. It's very easy. Just leave them alone. Yeah. <laughs> don't do any work. <laughs> don't polish. Be the, lazy. The less work you do, the more money you make. <laughs> it's, that's why we're in this business, for goodness sake. Isn't that right? Absolutely right. Sell them as they are. People buy history and objects that look like they actually come from the past. So don't get your brass and silver cleaner out. <laughs> right, top tip. Now, Russian markets, very interesting right now. The Russians have got a lot of money. They're they wanting money. to buy back their culture. Mm -hmm. So what's the story? Do we know how it ended up in England? We do. It's come from some clients of ours who we've dealt with over a number of years. Um, I think someone in the family at one time had been quite big collectors. We've sold good silver and things for them. So okay. At one point, there's been someone there with money who has right. had a good eye. Okay. So it's an inherited piece. Yeah. Right. So you're thinking Russian mid-19th century-ish. <sighs> What sort of work have you put into it? Have you spoken to buyers about this? I've spoken some to, to some Russian buyers. Uh, you see, look at his face, <laughs> right? I was trying to mask that. Yeah. <laughs> you've got to learn to read people in the world of art and antiques. This, David, you've got international buyers. You've got Russian buyers. He's spoken to them. Obviously, yeah. he's had some good feedback. Give us the might feedback. Have, might have. Go Don't on. give everything away. You know, I've, I've literally had an email exchange with a, with a Russian buyer this morning. Right. Um, very interested, um, okay. but as are several others who we know. So, yeah. That's, okay, it's an it exciting has, one. It has the potential to do well. It's an exciting one. The Russian market really has, obviously, you probably know, has opened up very much so in the last couple of generations, and there's stacks of Russian money oh. flowing around, like the Chinese money, and genuinely they're buying back objects from their own past. Why wouldn't you? Absolutely. Okay, think about the estimate here. Build in that Russian money calculation yeah what is initially the estimate two to four hundred seems cheap to me what do you think two to four hundred pounds okay estimates sometimes mean nothing sometimes I think it's gonna make more I d I'm not gonna say how much more I think it's gonna make until I hear what David Elstop thinks what do you think what's your instinct I think it'll make a thousand a thousand pounds yeah. Wow I think it's got to be worth a thousand pounds all day yeah. long. 
just as an interesting object, whether you're interested in this sort of thing or not. I mean, it's a piece of sculpture, a piece of art. Whether it's Russian or not, it's a damn good dagger and a very good quality dagger, so um, yeah. Okay, I think it probably is if your Russian buyer is showing great interest in it. Fingers crossed. Okay, two to four hundred pounds. What do you think? Would you buy it in actual fact? Let, let us know. You don't have to have an interest in things like this to, to want to own something like this. Absolutely not. You just put it on a stand yeah. in your living room. It's, it's going to look it's good. A, it is a work of art. It's a complete work of art. Okay, two to four hundred pounds. I think it's going to make more. David Ring is going to make a thousand pounds. What do you think? Let us know how close you get to the final hammer price. See you in a moment. Bye now. Three three is the Russian hunting dagger, 19th century one, lovely thing. Our statue of interest, 2,000 bid online on our website, 22, 24, 26, 28. Bids everywhere, 3,000, 32, 34, 36, 38, 4,000, 42, 44, 46, 48, 5,000. 5,000 bid, 5,5, five, 5,5, five, five, five. 6,000 on the phone, 6,5, 7,000, 7,5, 8,000, 8,5, 9,000, 9,000, it's on the telephone at 9,000, you're out on the sale room at 9,000 pounds, it's on the telephone at 9,000, we all done and finished selling to the phone at 9,000 pounds, all done. To the telephone bidder. Well, somebody sounded quite surprised there at the end. I just don't know what to say. £9,000. It just goes to show it's what you know and who you know that counts. Well done, David. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm David Harper, so from me and David Elstop, we'll see you soon. Cheers. <laughs>